So I like mini golf. And when I was a kid, we used to go to this place down the road, just keep putting and putting, never make it in the hole. It was hilarious, and it was fun with friends and family. But they took the place down. They tore it down. You know why? Because I'm the only person who likes mini golf. Mini golf sucks. Everyone hates it. You just can't get it in the hole. It makes you feel like an idiot because you can't hit it into the hole that's right in front of you. But it's okay. Because it's gone. You don't have to think about it anymore. It's gone. It's gone. So we can't go down there anymore. It's fine. I don't really care that much. But mini golf is still fun. And if I was the only person who believed that, there wouldn't be a game on Roblox called Super Golf with a consistent player count in the thousands. The game is great. You could just play golf all day. No worries. Except there's just one small issue that you just can't ignore because it's real bad. You see, as beautiful as this game looks and as catchy as the music is, there's something wrong. What is this? What is this? What is happening? Why does this happen when I turn my camera? Why? Well, it's because the person who made the camera made it wrong. Oh, I gotta make it in. Um, uh, let's go 69. You see, when I move my camera around, the distance from my actual ball here is not staying consistent. How are you supposed to play video golf if your camera go? There goes my headset. I'll tell you what we do. We fix it. We make a better one. But first, I gotta get this hole in one. The great spirit of the golf ball. Aid me in the shot. Don't let me down. See that? That guy. That guy right there. Is he, we're gonna do what he did. He has the Holy Spirit of the ball. You gotta give it like a... What does it say? 81.7 Anyway, let's make a camera system because it's fun. And that's what I do. I kind of make things. I'll see you in the studio. I'll put a link to the game in the description. You can just copy it as a resource, but I'm going to show you how it's made. Before you make a camera system though, you should know how the cameras actually work. So generally, they have three axes. One of them is the z-axis, but I've actually omitted that here because the z-axis does not do something you want. We're just going to worry about the x and the y. Green axis is the y-axis. Red axis is the X axis. So when you want to turn the camera left and right, you are turning on the Y axis, which looks like this. And when you turn the camera on the X axis, it looks like this. Don't use the Z axis, unless you want your camera to tilt. So what does that look like in code? If you want to disable the Roblox camera system, here's what you have to do. Go in test mode, go into players, your player, and go to player scripts, and look for the player module. Once you find this, copy it, control C, and then go into the starter player, starter player scripts. I do control shift V to paste it into there. Now you have your own modifiable player controller. This involves a camera system and the movement. All you have to do to disable the camera is to go in here and get rid of line 15. So now when I go in, the camera doesn't do anything anymore. I can't click, I can't move my camera, but I can still move around just fine. Depending on your style of scripting, the way you write this might be different. But the way I like to do it is one local script in the player scripts, and everything else goes in there. So the first thing you need to do is make something track your player when it spawns. So I've created this function called track character, and the reason I have this character argument is because this is connected to the character added function, which passes the character argument. The if check is just in case I run this function when the game starts. If your character's not there yet, no problem, no big deal. It waits for a body part called humanoid root part. That is the part you want your character's camera on. So if I go in test mode, look at my character, I've got all these body parts. No matter if it's R6, R15, you always got this humanoid root part. And if you want to visualize this, you can make everything else transparent. So this is me if I was just a humanoid root part. Notice how there's no animation and it's floating above the ground. The reason it's floating is because in the humanoid, there's a property called hip height. If I set this to zero, that bad, don't do that. This is the distance from the ground that the bottom of your humanoid root part is. So if I set this to one right now, it is currently one stud high. 
the hit point does depend on your character. So don't worry about that. Just know that's how it works. If you put your camera on your head, I'll show you what happens. You'll notice that something feels off. Every subtle movement with my head is now moving the camera. And I don't like that. I don't want that. Maybe you do, but that's not what I like. I don't want it to look like this. So put it on the root part if you don't want the camera to go nuts. Why would you want to change the camera system? Like I said, what was with Super Golf? Why was that wrong? The person who made the Super Golf camera used kind of a lazy method to smooth out the turning. No offense, but it just, it just doesn't look that great. And there's an easy way to get around it. So I've made a camera here, as you can see. It does have smoothing, but no matter how fast I turn, I can't get it to get closer to my character like the Super Golf camera does. And I can zoom in and out or whatever. It will still stay the same distance. The camera in Super Golf has a goal position. At any point in time, there's a position where the camera says, I want to be here. There's a tween system in place to move the camera towards that position. And it takes time. It doesn't just instantly set it there, but it, it smoothly moves over to that position. The problem with that is, so you have your camera right here. And all of a sudden you turn all the way over here. What's the quickest path from the front to the back? It's straight through the middle. Your camera does not need to go through the middle. You want your camera to go around like this. The only way you can really avoid that is to not have a goal position where it smoothly transitions over to, but have like a goal rotation. Say this is rotation zero, and this is rotation 180 degrees. If I instead train the rotation that I'm having, that rotation go all the way up 180. There's no possible way I could run into that other problem if I do this. The nice thing is, you can tween that stuff separately. If I make myself really fast, the camera will not trail behind like you would expect it to. It looks like the default Roblox camera where it's just snapping to you instantly. But somehow I still got my smoothness. The rotation and the position are smoothed separately. So I'm going to be using object-oriented programming because it just feels right. I know it's not good for entry level, but trust me, if you use any other coding language, it's going to be what you want to use primarily. So in a sense, this could be a non-Roblox camera tutorial as well. So we create the camera, we set up some initial data, this will become handy later, and we return it. For the methods, I need things that all cameras are going to have. So I think all my cameras are going to have a zoom function. So here's a little math I came up with to figure out how much to zoom. This variable doesn't actually do anything yet, it's just data. Stuff that I know I can use. Now I want an enable and a disable function. In this enable function, I need to set up the inputs and the actual frame update render step stuff. So for the inputs, I'm using combination of context action service and user input service. And for the render step, I'm just using binary render step. So what this means is that every frame, we're going to ask the camera, hey, what C frame are we supposed to be at? Where am I supposed to be right now? And the camera's going to say, okay, here you go. It's also going to update the thumbstick position. For the inputs, the first thing we worry about is the mouse movement, of course. Now, I only want the camera to update its position when I have the right button held down on the mouse. Because that's what people are used to in Roblox. That's what their first instinct will be. If you are holding the right mouse button, your mouse will get stuck in place and ask the camera to move based on where you're moving your mouse. There are other input types we need to support, but for now, let's get to work. I created an Orbital Camera Child class of the Camera class. This will inherit all the stuff that the camera already has. And when the camera asks us for what position the camera needs to be at and where it needs to be facing, this is where we say, all right, this is where you go. We know that we need to keep track of two axes, one for the y-axis and one for the x-axis. Again, y-axis is left and right movement, x-axis is up and down. And we'll throw in sensitivity just for fun. Right now, none of this does anything. It's just data. So don't be confused if I'm making up a bunch of stuff because I am. I just haven't made it to do anything yet. So the move function. This function is going to be called by the input, the mouse input. Whenever I have the right mouse button held, any movement from the mouse gets passed to this move function because that's how I set it up. We'll call that parameter delta because it's the change in your mouse. Mouse movement passes a vector three. It's an X, a Y, and a Z, just three numbers. In this case, your mouse is on a screen. If you move your mouse right or left, that's the X. Up and down is the Y. The Z axis is literally useless. It's always zero. We can use this information to change the angle of your camera. So if you move left or right with your mouse, 
we want to change the y-axis of the camera depending on your mouse's delta. And what the delta actually is, is how many pixels across your screen your mouse has moved. That's why I included a sensitivity because that differs based on device and DPI. A lot of things that are just not in my control. So I definitely want to include sensitivity as an option. So what we want is the higher the sensitivity value, the faster that your camera moves. When we rotate the camera on the y-axis, we divide that delta's x, which is the horizontal movement of the mouse, by the sensitivity value. This is our desired angle. This is where we want the camera to be in the future. Now, for the x-axis, things get a little bit special because you can look up and down, but usually most games have a limit where you can't. You can look straight up and straight down, but you can't go past that. Same thing we did with the y-axis, but we need to clamp the x value. So 90 degrees up would be straight up, negative 90 degrees would be straight down. You can clamp this based on what you're using, but here I'm using radians, so I'm going to use math.py. Now we have a desired angle for the x and the y axis. This doesn't tell us a position though. This doesn't tell us where to put the camera. This just tells us what angle the camera desires to be. To get the position from this angle, we're going to need to make another function, just for organizational reasons. This function I'll call get C frame because Roblox uses C frames matrices. You can imagine them like a bunch of vector threes put together to describe rotation and position at the same time. It's complicated, but it's not very hard to use. When you want to modify where the camera is, you have to call the C frame on the camera. You have to do camera.cframe equals whatever. So how do you make a C frame? Well, there's a few methods. You first need to consider what you have. We have two angles here. We have an X and a Y, but we also have a position because remember we're tracking the human root part. So we can actually get the position of the root part whenever we want. In Roblox, if you want to put these together, the general method goes like this. You first apply the rotation of the Y axis. So you look left and right first, then you apply the angle of the X axis. It looks up and down. And then once you have that, you add the position of the root part. Because when you add with the C-frame, you can add to the position. If you wanted to point the camera at the sun, where's the sun? You have to first turn this way. And now you're getting there. You're close to where the sun is, but you still need to look up. So you gotta look up. That's where the sun is. Now what order did I use to get to that rotation? First, I rotated on the y-axis, the green axis, like this. Then I rotated on the x-axis. It should be red, but it's not because of the model I'm using. Just ignore that. Pretend it's red. So yeah, the red axis, the x-axis. Pretend this is red. It's the blue one. You look up. Now, what if I were to do it the other way around? Well, so say I have the angle, but okay, let's look up first. Now, if I apply the y-axis rotation, when I'm in this position, it does this. That's not what you want. That's a z-axis rotation. That's why we don't want the z-axis rotation. Compare this to this. You definitely want something like this where it's not tilted. That's why we apply the rotation in y-x order. If you wanted to rotate the z-axis, you could just do it in a y-x-z order. In code, that looks like this. Using cframe.angles, you can create a new cframe that is rotated by whatever angle you want. I'm going to leave the x and the z-axis blank. I only want an angle rotated on one axis, so then I can combine all of my axes to create the thing I just showed you. So if I create this cframe.angles only on the y-axis and this one only on the x-axis, I have the two transformations that I showed you. They're separate. And if I want to combine them, you multiply them. Now we have an angle, but it's not at where you want it to be. It's just in the middle of the world, probably in the middle of nowhere. You want it to be on your character. All you have to do is add a position to those C frames. The problem is you need a distance. And if you don't have a camera distance set up, this will happen. Well, it works, but camera too close. So what we do is we, we use a distance. So just as a default distance, I'm using the number 10. 10 is a good standard distance. So when I'm saying self.distance down here, I'm referring to that 10 that all cameras will start with. Now we need to move the camera back depending on that number. All you need is a look vector. And every C-frame 
has a look vector. A look vector is a direction that a C-frame is pointing. So if you want to move the camera back a few steps, you get the look vector by doing that look vector on the C-frame and multiply it by some number. That will make the distance greater. I've condensed this down a little bit, but I'm subtracting the look vector times the distance. That will take the position it was at, move it back, because I'm subtracting the look vector. I'm going backwards. And then I multiply that distance by the number I have here. So now I've combined the y-axis, the x-axis, the player position, and zoomed out the camera a little bit based on a distance. What you'll end up with is really just the Roblox camera. It just follows you, it snaps, it's not smooth, but it's a camera system. You may notice it feels a little bit lower than usual. When you jump, something just feels weird. And that's because the camera is lower than usual. It's usually a little bit higher, like where your head is, but not attached to your head. It's just where your head is. So to fix this, we need to add an offset. For me, I just did 1.5 studs. If I move 1.5 studs upward, just by adding a new vector 3, I get this. So what if we want to smooth the camera instead of immediately moving it to where it needs to be? Well, that's why I have two different angle variables for the X and the Y axis. I don't just have an angle X and an angle Y. I have also a desired angle X and a desired angle Y. The idea is the angle will add on a certain amount each frame, trying to catch up with where the desired angle is trying to be. Think of a number line. Say we have two points on the number line, point zero and point 10. If each frame we want point 0.1 to go to point 0.2, but slowly, we need to add a certain amount until it gets to that point. And all you have to do is move half the distance between the two points. If we have two points, point A at 0 and point B at 10, the distance is 10 because 10 minus 0 is 10. If we divide that distance by 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. We need to move 5 on this frame. Point A is now at 5, point B is now at 10. All right, let's apply this again. 10 minus five will give you the distance, which is five. Now we divide five by two, which is 2.5. If we add 2.5 to point A, you'll have five plus 2.5, which is 7.5. Point A is now at 7.5, point B is still at 10. So eventually point A will reach point B given enough time. Well, how do you use this with the camera system? Well, the camera system is using number lines. The Y angle of the camera is a number, it's just a number. If you start at zero and you turn your camera 90 degrees to the right, assuming you're using degrees and not radians, applying this method will give you the same result. 90 minus zero is 90. Divide it by two, 45. So you add 45 to point A. Point A is now 45. Point B is still 90. Point A is your angle. Point B is your desired angle. So if at any point in time you ask the camera Hey, what's the angle? Use the angle, not the desired angle. If you modify the angle every frame, you will get a smoothed out camera that looks something like this. Depending on how much smoothing you've put into this, you could end up with more smoothing or less smoothing. It also depends on the frame rate. And if you want to get around that, you can use delta time, which is something that run service gives you. For simplicity, I've just gone with the regular old frame by frame. You got yourself a fix to the super golf camera problem. You can also add in zoom. All you have to do is make it so that the mouse wheel controls the distance of the camera. For the system I made, I've gone ahead and made controls for all devices such as mobile, controller. There's also sensitivity stuff you can play with. Smoothness, you can take away the smoothness if you don't like it. But the one thing I didn't do is passing through objects. I might do that in the future, but for this, I, I just didn't. I can't believe I just did this because of a super golf game. Thanks for sticking around, by the way. I know this is like a weird two-parter where it's funny in the beginning and it's tutorial in the end, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful, and bye-bye.